Health isn't just the absence of illness. It's not just about not being sick. True health is a result of right thinking, right habits, and ultimately strong character. It's a reflection of how you live, how you think, and who you are at your core. A friend once shared a story with me about his old football coach. This coach would tell the team over and over again that the most important thing they could cultivate on the field and in life was what he called a healthy attitude. Now, sure, they had to do the drills, push the sled, hit the weights. But according to the coach, without the right attitude, without a healthy mindset, they were just going through the motions. No purpose, no direction, just dead weight moving around. That stuck with me. It got me thinking. The coach wasn't just talking about physical strength or fitness. He was talking about something much deeper character. Your attitude shapes your actions. The way you approach life, the way you lean into it or shy away from it, reflects your character. Here's the truth. If you're planning to stick around for the long haul, to not just survive but thrive, you're going to need more than muscles. You're going to need endurance, mental strength, and character. You see, after a certain point in life, let's say 17 or 18, your success, your health, and your well-being are no longer just about how fast you can run or how much you can lift. They're about how strong your character is. Just like a long-distance runner, the real winners in life are those who have the stamina to keep going, powered by the strength of their spirit. Now, ever watch the Olympics? Those athletes don't just rely on their bodies, they rely on their willpower, their discipline, their character. It's the same for health. It's not just physical. It's who you are. And when you start seeing health as a reflection of your character, everything changes. Now, maybe you haven't thought of health as being connected to character before, but I hope you're starting to see the link. It's hard to think clearly or make good decisions when your health is dragging you down. Imagine trying to focus on a big meeting or a career-changing decision when you're out of breath just standing up from a chair. Or think about this. How can you confidently pitch a new idea, approach a client, or feel your best when your suit doesn't fit right or you're uncomfortable in your own skin? But here's the thing, you don't have to go to extremes. You don't need to believe every piece of bad news or every headline that says you've got to avoid this or that food because of some study on lab rats. You don't have to become a health fanatic. No, just use common sense. Moderation is key. Understand that your health is a reflection of your choices and your choices are a reflection of your character. Make the right ones in the right amounts and you'll be well on your way to a strong, healthy life, both in body and in spirit. A wise Greek philosopher once said, do all things in moderation and nothing in excess. Now that's a principle worth living by, especially when it comes to your lifestyle. Sure, it's perfectly fine to enjoy an ice cream cone once in a while, something sweet to celebrate a job well done or to soften the sting of a tough day. But here's the key. Don't turn that one cone into a daily habit of downing quarts of ice cream, chasing it with a pack of cigarettes, and washing it all down with a fifth of whiskey. Believe me, that's a one-way ticket to the junkyard. But let's be clear swinging to the other extreme, obsessing over your health to the point of driving yourself crazy is just as destructive. So remember the wisdom, moderation in all things and nothing to excess. Worry and stress can be as harmful to your heart as a high cholesterol count. So ask yourself, what's worse? Having a high cholesterol number or living in constant anxiety about it, punishing yourself with a strict set of rules? Let me tell you, it's far easier to live by moderation. When you do, health becomes a matter of character, not just a numbers game. Sure, watch what you eat, watch what you drink, but don't let the rules strangle your joy. Now, the key to moderation is understanding who you are and how you're built. That means understanding your character physically, mentally, and emotionally. Not everyone is made to run marathons, climb mountains, or play linebacker for the Chicago Bears. We all have different capacities and callings, and each one comes with its own rhythm and demands. A rocket scientist doesn't need to run 20 miles a day, just as a truck driver doesn't need to sit under a lamp for hours pouring over the fine print. Each profession taxes the body in different ways, and therefore each person needs to eat, rest, and recover in a way that suits their lifestyle. And the same goes for celebrating. Some people can handle a cigar or a drink in moderation, while others can't. Some people can run for miles but have no patience to sit still. You see, it's all about knowing yourself. But here's the truth I can tell you with certainty. If you've let yourself get seriously out of shape or you're caught up in destructive habits, it's going to be hard to respect yourself. And when you don't respect yourself, it's nearly impossible for others to respect you either. So take care of yourself, but do it with balance. 
Your health is an extension of your character and character is built on moderation. It's about knowing where to draw the line in your actions, your habits, and even your thoughts. Make wise choices. And you'll find that both your health and your self-respect will follow. Let's face it, this is the reality of the world we live in today. If you want success, if you want to lead, there's a certain lifestyle you've got to adopt. You wouldn't be here listening to me if you weren't someone aiming for success, someone with ambitions that aren't going to be derailed by circumstances or by whatever cards life has dealt you. No, you're here because you want to move forward. And in today's world, that means embracing the values of the time. Look at the president of the United States. He jogs almost every day. Why? Because he's leading a country that's always on the move, always pushing forward. And let's be honest, people today aren't going to accept a leader who's worn out, physically or mentally. That's just the way it is. No single person is going to change the way the world works. Not right now, not in this moment. Yes, times will change, leaders will adapt, but they'll adapt with the times not ahead of them, not behind them. And right now, being in good physical shape is part of being seen as capable, strong, and ready to lead. Good health plays into your personal esteem. It raises your standing in the eyes of others. It gives you that extra edge in your ambitions, and puts you in a position to seize the good things life has to offer. But here's the important part, these outward benefits of good health. As valuable as they are, don't even scratch the surface of why it's so important. See, the real rewards of good health go beyond what the world sees. They're found in your mind, your spirit, and your soul. If there were one formula, one secret to perfect health, we'd be talking about it as the answer to life's greatest mystery. And believe me, if I knew the one true path to health, this wouldn't be a seminar on success and character. It would be the foundation of a new religion. Now, here's a thought. Good health might just be an effective character as much as it is a cause of it. Strong character is the best foundation for a sound mind and a sound body. Think about it when you feel good about yourself. You're naturally inclined to take care of yourself. But if you lose respect for your body, that carelessness seeps into other areas of your life. It's all connected. Look at older people who've lived long, full lives. The ones who are still out there, active, engaged, living, they're some of the strongest people around. They've survived and thrived because of their strength, both physically and mentally. When they get together, sure, they talk about who's had which operation or who they saw at the golf course. But once the small talk fades, you know what they talk about? They talk about food. They talk about how they're keeping their digestive systems in check. Why? Because health is always on their minds, it's become second nature. It's their foundation, and they know it's what keeps them going. When it comes to digestion, sure, there are certain foods that help keep the system running smoothly, but relying on just those foods won't give you a truly balanced diet. You see, your body has a wide range of nutritional needs, and to meet those needs, you need variety. The same principle applies to life itself. Just like you need variety in your diet, you need variety in your days, your experiences, your activities. Now, what's true for your physical health is also true for your financial health and honestly, every part of life. If you keep doing what you've always done, you're going to keep getting what you've always gotten. That's a simple truth. If you're stuck in the same routine day after day, year after year with no break, no vacation, no new experiences, then you might not even realize if you're in good shape or not. Sometimes you can't appreciate what you have until you step away from it or until it's gone or until you experience something different. One of the easiest and most powerful ways to break up your day, keep your energy high and make sure you're fully present for the best moments of your life, which by the way is today is to catch a nap whenever you can. Don't underestimate the power of rest. Shakespeare himself said it best. Sleep knits up the ravel sleeve of care. In other words, sleep helps repair and restore both your body and mind. A little break can go a long way in keeping you fresh and ready for life. There's a lot more to be said about health, but let's be honest, there aren't always clear-cut answers. What I do believe is that health is a reflection of your character. I've noticed that people who live ethically, people who carry themselves with integrity, tend to be happier and more relaxed. On the flip side, stress which often comes from anger, hostility, or resentment has a nasty way of showing up in your physical health. It takes a toll. Now, some might say this is wishful thinking that people get what they truly deserve in life. But I happen to believe it. In fact, I think life sometimes gives you a little bit more than you deserve if you're on the right path. When you live with integrity, take care of your body and keep balance and variety in your life, you set yourself up for good things, maybe not immediately, but eventually. That's the reward of character. And that's the real path to good health.
Now, can class and perseverance be learned? Just like learning to drive a car or play a musical instrument. I believe perseverance can absolutely be developed and there are some very effective strategies for doing so. One of the most powerful tools for building perseverance is setting goals, clear, realistic, challenging, and most importantly, rewarding goals. Let me tell you, goals are everything for someone who's truly success oriented. Without them, you're just playing at life, not really in the game. The difference between someone who's driven by goals and someone who isn't is like the difference between a Wimbledon champion and a kid batting a tennis ball around with no net, no opponent, and no way of keeping score. There's no real purpose, no challenge to bring out your best. And yet, despite all the books and seminars on goal setting, very few people actually take the time to do it right. It's always amazed me how the average person spends more time planning a two week vacation than they do planning their life. Think about that. What's he taking a vacation from? He hasn't even decided what he's aiming for in life, but for those two weeks, he knows exactly where he's going, what he's going to do. And he plans it all down to the last detail. The rest of the year, not so much. You see, challenge is what creates character and goals represent challenge in the most positive sense. A leader knows exactly what their goals are. They've got them clearly in focus, not only their personal goals, but also the goals of the organization. One of the main jobs of leadership is to define goals for the people who can't do it for themselves. But there's something I want to bring up that's rarely talked about when it comes to goal setting, and that's the traps that come with it. When I was a kid, I used to daydream about buying a ticket on a train and just going somewhere. I didn't care where, I didn't think about how long the trip would take or where I'd end up. The idea of just being on that journey, letting the train take me wherever was exciting. And sure, there's still something appealing about that, the adventure of it. But as an adult, you don't live your life that way. When you buy a ticket, you're buying it with a destination in mind. You know exactly where you're headed. Maybe you've got to change flights in another city. Maybe your flight gets delayed or canceled. Maybe the journey's not as smooth as you hoped. But none of that stops you. You persist because you know where you're going and you're determined to get there. That's goal-directed behavior in its simplest form. So the key is not just setting goals, but setting the right goals and then being committed to seeing them through. Life may throw a few curveballs along the way, but if you've got your destination in mind and you're willing to adapt and keep going, you'll get there. That's perseverance. That's what separates those who dream about success from those who achieve it. There are two types of goals you need to focus on. Short-term goals and long-term goals. Sometimes in life, it's like you're flying across the country aiming for something big. Other times, it's just a short trip, like walking down to the corner grocery store to pick up a few things. Long-term goals are the equivalent of a major journey. When you reach those long-term goals, your life will be fundamentally changed, and the process of getting there will transform you into someone stronger, wiser, and more capable than you are right now. So how do you identify those long-term goals? It starts with asking yourself the right questions. First, what do I want to do? Second, what do I want to be? Third, what do I want to see? Fourth, what do I want to say? Have? Where do I want to go? These questions will give you a roadmap for your future. But once you know what you want, you've got to attach a time frame to it. Ask yourself, how long will it take me to achieve this particular goal? Write down the number of years you think it'll take. Create a timeline for each of your long-term goals. Then make it a habit to review what you've written regularly. Keep track of your progress and most importantly, persevere. Goal setting is the critical first step, but goal achievement is a lifelong process. That's where the challenge comes in. It's not just about writing down a goal. It's about the journey of achieving it over time. And that's what makes it so rewarding when you finally get there. Now, when it comes to immediate goals, those that take anywhere from a day to a year to achieve, I recommend setting plenty of short-term objectives, especially ones you can accomplish in a month or less. Write them down, just like your long-term goals. Review them frequently, track your progress, and do something daily that moves you closer to achieving those short-term goals. The beauty of short-term goals is that they give you frequent reasons to celebrate, and that builds momentum. These short-term wins are not just important, they're essential. They build your confidence. They keep you motivated. And most importantly, they create a lifestyle that's built on perseverance and achievement. You see, the small wins today fuel the big wins tomorrow. So make goal setting a habit and goal achieving a way of life. That's the path to success. Let me emphasize this perseverance is as crucial to achieving your goals as gasoline is to driving a car. Without it, you won't even be able to start the engine, let alone keep moving forward. Sure, there will be times when it feels like you're just spinning your wheels. 
but with genuine perseverance, you'll always find a way out of that rut. Without it, you're stuck, no progress, no movement. Now, what's the opposite of perseverance? It's procrastination. Perseverance says, I never quit. Procrastination, it says, I never start. And even when you do start, procrastination makes sure you never finish. I see it like this. If you can't finish something, that's just another form of procrastination. Ask people why they procrastinate. You'll often hear excuses like, I'm a perfectionist. Everything has to be just right before I can get down to work. No distractions, no noise, no interruptions. And of course, I've got to be in perfect health. I can't work with a headache. That's one way procrastination shows up by never starting. But procrastination has another side too, not finishing. You've probably heard this before. I'm never satisfied. I'm my own toughest critic. If every I isn't dotted and every T isn't crossed, then I just can't call it done. That's just how I am and I'll never change. Sound familiar? It's the same story, different ending. Do you see what's happening here? A fault is being dressed up as a virtue. The perfectionist is saying, I'm too good for this world. My standards are too high. It's a clever defense when people are asked about their weaknesses, but in the end, it's just a more sophisticated form of excuse making. Now let's get to the real root of procrastination. What's really behind it? Fear of failure. At the heart of extreme perfectionism is fear. Fear of not being good enough, fear of making mistakes, fear of criticism. But here's the thing, fear is fear, no matter what it's about. Whether you're afraid of being less than perfect or afraid of anything else, the result is the same. You're paralyzed by it, you're stuck, not moving forward. Whether you never start or you never finish, you're still going nowhere. You're letting fear keep you on the sidelines. You're allowing a negative vision of the future to take control of the one where you see yourself being criticized, laughed at, or even written out of town on a rail. That's why perseverance is so important. It's the antidote to fear and procrastination. It's what keeps you moving, even when things aren't perfect. It's what helps you push past the fear and get things done. Of course, this negative vision of the future, this idea that everything will go wrong if you even try, it's nothing more than a convenient excuse. It's a mental tool that allows you to do nothing and feel justified in it. But let me tell you, you don't have to stay stuck in that place. You can take procrastination and flip it into perseverance. And if you follow what I'm about to share, the process will be far easier than you think. Here's the first principle. Break it down. Whatever you're trying to achieve, whether it's writing a book, climbing a mountain, or painting the house, the secret to success lies in your ability to break the task into small, manageable pieces. You don't have to focus on the entire mountain. Just focus on the next step in front of you. Take on what's within your reach right now and forget about the distant, overwhelming picture. That's the key. Replace the negative vision of a daunting future with positive, actionable steps in the present moment. This is the first critical technique to eliminate procrastination, one day at a time. You've heard that phrase before, I'm sure. What we're doing here is breaking the time needed for a big task into small daily portions. For instance, let's say you want to write a 4030 page book. You can break that down to a page and a quarter each day. Do that every day for a year and guess what you've written your book. Discipline yourself to stay in the present, not looking too far ahead or back. And you'll achieve things you never thought possible. Now, here's another step. Track your time. You're going to take note of how you actually spend your days. Keep a written record or diary, if you will, of where your time goes. You'll be shocked at how much gets wasted on distractions, detours, and outright time wasters. You'll see how often you wander off course, almost as if you planned it that way. And maybe on some level you did. But when you force yourself to write down that you spent 15 minutes hanging around the coffee machine, you'll think twice about doing it again tomorrow. When you have to jot down that you worked on a big project for 30 minutes and then took a break to read the newspaper, you'll push yourself to stay on the project longer next time and forget about the paper. Just try keeping a time diary for a week. It will revolutionize your ability to focus and drive you toward your goals. Break it down, write it down. Simple ideas, but incredibly effective. These are powerful tools to end procrastination and get you started on the road to achievement. This is how you move from excuses to action, from hesitation to perseverance. But how do you keep going when the excitement fades? How do you keep your motivation high day after day, especially when the road ahead seems long and you're still far from the finish line? That's a challenge we all face, and it's where perseverance truly gets tested. 
The great Irish poet William Butler Yeats once reflected on a troubling reality he saw in the modern world. He observed something striking. It often seems like the wrong people, those whose motives we don't admire, are the ones filled with the most energy, while good people seem to lose steam, doubting their abilities. He put it perfectly when he said, the best lack all conviction, while the worst are full of passionate intensity. It's true, isn't it? We can look around and see plenty of things happening that we wish weren't happening. And when we see how hard some people work to bring about those things, it's easy to feel discouraged. It's easy to think, what's the point? Why should I keep pushing forward? Maybe I should just give up on my goals, take it easy and stop trying so hard. Even those of us with strong character have moments like that. We all face times when the fire of motivation flickers, when doubt creeps in. That's when perseverance becomes truly challenging. So what's the answer to keep going? Let's go back to goal setting for a moment. Remember when I asked you to think about five categories for your long-term goals. What do you want to do? What do you want to be? What do you want to see? Where do you want to go? Now I want you to add a sixth category. With whom do you want to share? Who are you working for besides yourself? Think about it, who is depending on you? Who will benefit from your success, from your perseverance? Who stands to lose if you give up? It's one thing to have goals for yourself, but when you start thinking in terms of others, you tap into a deeper well of motivation. Ask yourself, who will you be able to help once you achieve your goals? Who can you lift up, support, or inspire because you didn't quit? Write down your answers to these questions, just like you did with your other goals. This is how you keep going when the going gets tough. When it's no longer about just you, when you realize others are counting on your perseverance, you'll find the strength to push through. For many of you, the answers to who are you working for will come easily. If you have a family, your spouse and children depend on you. Perhaps your elderly parents now look to you for care and support. But even if you're single or just starting out in your career, you can still find reasons to persevere beyond your personal needs. Maybe you want to give back to the schools that educated you, the religious institutions that gave you guidance, or the hospital that healed you when you needed it most. Now, keep in mind, this doesn't have to be about money. Sharing comes in many forms. If your work has equipped you with valuable skills, you can share your time and abilities. In fact, you should. There's power in giving back. And it's not just about making the world better for others, it builds you up too. But here's the thing, it's not enough to say, I'll do better if I'm working for others as well as myself. You have to find reasons outside yourself to persevere if you want to keep going when the road gets rough. It's non-negotiable. Hemingway once said, a man alone hasn't got a chance. That's not just about needing others to help you along the way. It's also about needing people who you can help. You need someone or something that pulls you beyond your own ambitions. Yes, material success is nice, but what's in it for me will only take you so far. What's in it for somebody besides me? That's the mindset that will carry you as far as you need to go. That's where real perseverance is born.